Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sometime back when I was a lot younger, I was reading something and I came across a Latin phrase that fortunately was translated for me in what I was reading. It was called festina lente, which means make haste slowly. Well, how do you do something like that? How do you hurry up and yet slow down? How do you put your pedal to the metal but also ride the brakes? What in the world is that talking about? Well, as near as I could figure it out, it meant get it done as quickly as you can without screwing up. Get it from point A to point B, but don't forget about the scenery along the way. However you look at it, though, the Lord's been modeling that ever since the creation began and in himself even before that. God hurries in to make the heavens and the earth. And then he lets things go for quite a while. He keeps telling people, be ready for this, that, or the other thing. And yet the people sitting there saying, well, when's this, that, or the other thing going to come? It's already this hour, this day, this month, this year, and it hasn't happened yet. What is the matter with God? And then all of a sudden God does something and everybody's surprised. The coming of the Lord was that way, wasn't it? Who's ready when Jesus finally comes? Is Zechariah ready for the angel who tells him that he is going to be the father of the last prophet that Israel is going to have before the Savior comes? Um, no. Elizabeth isn't particularly ready either, although she surrenders to the Lord's will and believes him a lot more quickly. Mary is not particularly ready when the angel comes and appears to her, and she's astonished by all of that, but yet she also accepts the Lord's word. He's been pointing toward this all along. And suddenly, the angel appears. Suddenly, an angel appears to the shepherds after the Savior has appeared in Bethlehem. Suddenly, there's a multitude of the heavenly host. And then, you wait for something else to happen. It seems like stop and go driving when you look through the scriptures. Hurrying along toward this and then stopping and looking at stuff. There's large chunks of scripture that are devoted to small periods of time, and then you skip over hundreds and hundreds of years before anything else happens. And because we're looking at it from our perspective, we don't see that in all of this, God is going at just the right speed to accomplish just what he wants to get done. As the young people told us, he wants us to be forgiven. He wants us to be saved. He wants us to be with him forever. God hurries, hustles in your life to take you in your baptism and make you his. And then, as Peter reminds us, he patiently endures everything that we do and say until he gets us where we need to be. Do not overlook this one fact, beloved. I'm not talking to the rest of the world. He's talking to you and me and the believers of that time and all the believers yet to come. This is an important fact. With the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord sees it all. He's involved in it all. We have no idea what it's like to be outside of time and to be touching all of time from eternity. We just know what the Lord gives us right here, which is that when something happens is exactly when the Lord wants it to happen. When Jesus came, it was exactly when he wanted it to come. He wanted the Romans occupying Jerusalem. He wanted Herod the Great and then the lesser Herods following. He wanted Pontius Pilate. He wanted an old man and an old woman without children to be the parents of the forerunner, of the last great prophet before the final ultimate prophet of God came in the flesh in Jesus. He wanted all those things just there, just so, and he waited a long, long time as we count the wait. But for God, it's there. And then, as I said, sometimes it hustles through. But with God, he's there with you. The same thing when you hurry into sin. The same thing when you dart off this way or that. God is not just as hasty to come down you and strike you with lightning, to drop a mountainside on you, to open up the ground to swallow you, to send snakes to come and bite you, is he? 
He is slow and patient with you to forgive. He's not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, Peter reminds us, but patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish. God takes his time loving you, forgiving you, guiding you, and guarding you so you don't end up outside the kingdom forever. And as Christians, he invites us to have that same patience with the people around us, doesn't he? Just because that person is over there doing that right now doesn't mean it's always going to happen. <clears throat> Some of us pray for family members for a long time because they've been outside of the faith for a long time. Hoping and praying that finally the Lord will bring them back. We do not want their lives to end before they are, as some people say, right with God. Until they are trusting in the promises of Jesus. The end is hurrying up in some ways. And sometimes when things are really going badly for us, some of us are tempted to join with the scripture, say, come Lord Jesus, come quickly, amen, or something like that. But most of the times we get so comfortable in this life, we are so dug in, we want everything to slow down, we want to take our time, and when something jumps out and surprises us, we're not ready for it. Because we're patient when we should be impatient, and impatient when we should be patient. We should be impatient for every good gift God gives us. We should be impatient for the chance to forgive and love other people as well as to tell other people that we are sorry for whatever we have done to them. But then we're patient to wait for God's blessings, to wait for the opportunities to progress down the road, to wait for opportunity to welcome others into the church, to wait for the opportunities to be the people that God wants us to be. Not screaming through life and ignoring all those folks around us in need, but each one individually seeing and caring for them. The day of the Lord will come. You have it from Peter just as you had it from Jesus. In fact, he's taking ideas straight from the Lord that he had heard while he was still with them on earth. Sneaking in like a thief and grabbing everything up and running off with it. But yet, he's not running off without you. He takes off everything that's old, carries it off. And Peter says he's pretty much going to destroy it all so that he can make it all new. So he can make it all better, so he can make you new and better as well. He is waiting until that time that the Father sends him so he can call all who believe him home. And Advent is the reminder that we don't know when that's going to be. I saw this just the other day. Advent is the reminder that this Christmas may not come. You ever stop and think about that? It's going to end. We just don't know when. Some of you had a few Christmases. Some of you have had a whole bunch of Christmases. But there's no guarantee that there's going to be one more Christmas for you or for everybody from anything that the Scriptures say. And as God is patient with you as a sinner, He asks you to be patient with Him coming back, but yet at the same time to hurry toward every good thing He gives you and every good thing that you can do in His service. You don't know. So... You're ready when that thief breaks in. When Christ comes into your life and says, it's over, let's go. You say, I'm ready. Let's do it. God has taken his time with each and every one of us in so many ways. I haven't been struck dead yet for any of the wrong things I've said, thought, or done, and neither have you. God is still having you here because he still has plans and purposes for you here. Maybe they're big things. Maybe they seem little to you, but every one of them is important to him and his kingdom, and everyone is important to you and the people around you. He holds you as dear and precious, and he wants you to be with him, no matter what, through whatever. All these things, Peter reminds us, are going to be dissolved. The sun, the moon, the stars, the very earth on which we stand, because it needs to be made new. It's like a controlled burn in a forest. we got to get all the brush and dead wood out so something that is new and beautiful can sprout. And we aren't afraid when that comes because we know that he needs to burn something out of us as well, the last of our sin, our guilt, our doubt, so that we sprout new and beautiful also, imperishable, incorruptible. We will not rise up to be the grass that withers and the flower that fades. When we rise up, we will be green and growing forever. The tree planted by the river of life, sucking our nourishment right out of God and being with God in his presence, without interruption. When the patience of God finally is exhausted, 
and we are in the eternal now, then we can appreciate that God hurries when he thinks he should be going more slowly and goes slowly when we think he should be hurrying. Everything at the right time, in the right season, for you and for me to be saved. According to his promise, we are waiting for the new heaven and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. He keeps making you righteous because you keep messing up your righteousness. But that time will finally come when you are righteous, inside out, top to bottom, and nothing will take that away. Nothing will sully you. You will be clean and sparkling and beautiful from inside out forevermore. Therefore, beloved, as Peter sums this up for these people, so he does for you. Since you are waiting for these, are you waiting for Jesus to come back? Or are you trying to put that off for as long as possible? Can you say with a clean conscience and a clear heart and with absolute certainty, come Lord Jesus, I'm ready now or I'm ready in a thousand years. If you are waiting for these things, if you are waiting to have no aches and pains of body, mind, or spirit, no more breaks, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more suffering, and certainly no more death. If this is important to you, and if you know the only remedy for it is in Christ Jesus, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish, which means keep asking his forgiveness and accepting it when he gives it to you. Be diligent to be found with him without spot or blemish, with a pure and holy heart made clean by the blood of Christ, and at peace, at peace in yourself, at peace in your family, at peace in your church, at peace in your world. Let God calm your heart and still your mind. So whether he rushes in things to you or whether it just plods along day after day after day, you're content and ready because you know what's happening to you is exactly what God wants to happen. Be at peace, be righteous, be forgiven, and experience the great and wonderful joy of Christ now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace that surpasses understanding keep you in Christ Jesus. Amen.